Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you that you joined our today's session uh, with quite a long title, but we hope that the content will be uh, light and funny. So let me share my screen. So we would like to talk more about how to promote your activities and why having a, a public re, a relation and fundraising specialists make sense. So in the first place, <laughs> we are to tell you what to do. Uh, my name is uh, Klara Jokova. I'm an executive director of Wikimedia Czech Republic uh, since March 2018. And uh, most of uh, today's session uh, will be held by my colleague, uh, Natalia or Tali Stabalova. She's our uh, fundraiser and PR specialist in the Wikimedia Czech Republic since January uh, on the PR position and since September 2021 on fundraising position as well. So just show you a broader picture. Uh, who, what is, how big is Wikimedia Czech Republic? Uh, we are Czech chapter, of course, uh, till 2006. But uh, the stuff uh, uh, the chapter uh, hired in 2017. Uh, between the years 2018 and now, uh, we grow from four people to 10 people uh, in within the team, uh, even though still most of the team has just like part-time jobs. Uh, Natalia didn't start on the, uh, from the scratch. Uh, she could continue the, um, the, the work that was started by our uh, two colleagues who were just for a few hours a week. Uh, they were external contractors and they started uh, made a, a more uh, concrete fundraising and PR, uh, PR work in the uh, Wikimedia Czech Republic. And what's important that they uh, was able to finish the preparation phase uh, which I'm going to mention uh, slightly later. And uh, we and why and what this bring this shift from external to internal fundraising in PR uh, that is covered by, by Tali. Uh, that's the topic of today's session. So I'm, I will start with <laughs> lessons learned, but I think it's good to be prepared for several things uh, on the beginning. The preparation phase I mentioned takes several months. Uh, to getting money, to gain the money, it's really the tip of an iceberg and uh, it takes time to get it. What's uh, essential to have or to, uh, to create uh, during the pre this preparation phase, I think is stakeholder, stakeholder analysis, just uh, to, uh, to describe and set your target groups, what groups you have around and how to reach them. Because these, this is your essential, essential circles. These are your essential circles that you can reach on the first place and you should know how they look like and how you can contact them uh, the best. So you set target groups and you set tools. Next thing, uh, what I would suggest to prepare, it's general fundraising and PR strategy. Uh, what we need to find out is how we support our three main program areas the best. And we choose this. We have uh, three main program groups, educational programs, community programs, and partnership programs. And 
as educational programs um, uh, are the best described to the, the general public, we choose this uh, for the direct donoring. Uh, as a community programs are uh, the best to support it by different type of grants, this is what we choose for, for them. And partnership programs, so the partnership with uh, public institutions, this is the best target for CSR or corporate donations. So this is in general our main PR and fundraising strategy. And the last thing what, what was essential to prepare is an annual fundraising and PR strategy. It doesn't need to be something really complicated, but you supposed to know what, when, how, how many, and how much you expect it uh, to bring. Uh, my advice is keep it light. Uh, what was our uh, what was, was our um, uh, vision as well uh, was that we wanted to create a fresh image for WMCZ. So here is what we want to share with you. Uh, it has been almost a year since we decided to hire a fundraiser and PR specialist in-house. Uh, Talia works for 20 hours a week and she helps us to promote our activities better and she kickstarted our fundraising. Uh, so what we want to share with you is what did we expect? How is the outcome of this? And specific examples of our campaigns and content. Hello everybody, thanks for being uh, here with us. The first thing I want to start with is just a basic overview of uh, what does a fundraiser and a PR specialist do. In other words, uh, what I do for Wikimedia Czech Republic, uh, as you can see, I do stuff uh, at our public uh, events, like presenting and uh, putting bounds on windows. Uh, but. Uh, Seriously, I take uh, the overall presentation to the public and marketing under my wings. I work part time, which means I cannot do everything, but I make sure it works uh, with our um, team, mem team members. Uh, we uh, have uh, 10 um, members of Wikimedia Czech Republic team. So I cooperate with the rest of the team. I promote activities and the idea of free knowledge on social media, blog, website, and other channels. I create fundraising campaigns and take continuous care of uh, our donors and supporters. I come up with creative ideas and I am very lucky that our ED Clara uh, mostly accepts them and does not shut them down. I would uh, like to start with a little bit about our first ever fundraising campaign, which took part, uh, which took place uh, last Christmas, and uh, it was pretty successful, uh, as it was the first one we chose. Uh, we chose our seniors' rights Wikipedia project because it's the most heartwarming one and uh, we thought we have the best uh, chance to reach out to people's hearts basically with it uh, our educational team does a really great um, work with that they have already taught um, something around 600 seniors to write wikipedia and they have a new hobby uh, they have new friends uh, they have new purpose basically it's really great so we chose a local platform Daruime and we were as specific as possible uh, with our goal. We said last year we thought 100 seniors to write Wikipedia, next year we want to reach 150 and in order to do that we need um, 30 uh, regular donors which we didn't end up uh, succeeding in because we only got uh, like three regulars from this campaign but we reached the uh, uh, goal the uh, amount of the goal amount of money 
we actually uh, the goal, the original goal was thirty thousand, so uh, we got forty thousand crowns. Here are the outcomes. We got in total forty three donors, uh, around sixteen hundred uh, euro to this day. A lot of new people attracted to the project, which I think is very important as well. And uh, the whole campaign was just very feel good. It had a positive vibe. We did a video with real seniors who uh, took our courses and then um, Wikipedia really became their obsession in some cases, which is awesome. There was this uh, female senior who said something like that, thanks to this project, uh, thanks to Wikipedia, I was all right in quarantine. Otherwise, I would be probably very nervous and stressed, but this helped me to get through it. So really, uh, people felt touched by that and um, the results speak for themselves, I think. How to take care of our donors? Well, um, you have to build a relationship with them. It's not just fundraising, it's friend raising, really. You want to um, let them know that they're part of something important. And you can do that through many uh, channels. We usually um, do that through email, email marketing. We created a thank you email uh, with Clara. Clara wrote it uh, herself and we send it to every new donor that we have on uh, that we And uh, we also create four uh, special newsletters for them a year so that they know how their money is being used and um, what do we do actually, in fact. Uh, so we also invite them to personal events and we uh, thank them at the end of the year with a card. Promote your activities like their success depends on it, because it does. There are many ways you can promote uh, your activities and um, some of them that we use a lot uh, are press releases, blog posts, uh, blog posts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We haven't used TikTok yet, but I think it would work. I don't have the capacity to do that yet, but um, it was just a little tip that I wanted to give you. I think it could be useful. You can also ask NGOs and uh, companies uh, to share your content. This one is actually quite useful for us. Um, it doesn't cost anything to the companies and they can connect themselves with something uh, meaningful. So most of them uh, take that opportunity and uh, it can end up in a higher reach. Coordination is the key. As I said uh, earlier, there are 10 team members uh, in Wiki Wikimedia Czech Republic. So uh, I have to talk to them and uh, help them to promote their activities themselves because I cannot um, do it all on my own as I only work part time. So I create step-by-step -step tutorials for almost everything. Um, we have tutorials for how to write a blog post, how to work with social media, um, how to do email marketing, which is also uh, great for me. It saves me a lot of time because every time somebody asks me something, I can just send them a link, uh, which is really useful for them for me, for everyone. And in case um, I ever left this position, I can uh, much, uh, it would be much easier for me to um, train a new person. This is a system that Clara develops, developed and uh, she actually in, wants everybody in the team to do this. And I think it's really great. So that's a little tip for you. PR calendar with every PR output anybody does, because so when there is 10 people that do uh, marketing uh, activities, you have to know when is uh, what output uh, given, uh, you know, so we use Asana, uh, that's something Clara implemented and I think it works really great. We use it almost for every job 
that we do every task. Uh, but uh, with PR calendar, I think it's extremely useful because uh, you don't want two emails to go to your supporters in one day. You don't want two Facebook blog posts being published at the same time. It's something you really have to avoid. So every time anybody does something that goes out, uh, they just write it here. And before you want, you put something out, you check it. If anybody has already sent an email today, you won't do it. You will do it tomorrow. It's uh, very easy, but uh, saves a lot of time. In-person events. Uh, it is uh, In-person events are something I think we're fairly good at. These are pictures of um, Czech Wiki photo um, exhibition we did last year. Uh, Czech Wiki photo is our contest um, of the best photos of Czech things on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, on Wikimedia Commons, yeah. And uh, the photos are actually displayed for a month um, in our Scout Institute uh, in the heart of Prague. And this is a picture from the opening. Uh, we also um, did um, discussion, grand discussion about free licenses uh, on the same day, and it was really lovely. It's a lot of stress and effort that uh, actually pays off most of the time, and it helps you create a real bond with both the public and uh, the Wikimedia community. This is just a short video uh, of uh, Poetry Slam that we did on the same uh, day, Poetry Slam for Wikipedia. Uh, we hired artists that, are, that happen to be my friends to write poems about Wikipedia. It was very successful and I think it was a great uh, bonus for people uh, who were there. Yeah, A lot of people came to see specifically Poetry Slam and um, they stayed for other activities as well. So I think it's great to connect um, different words. So another experience uh, brought our new theme this year which we prepared in a form of a monthly challenge, uh, namely Human Rights Month on Czech Wikipedia. Uh, this was a month-long challenge to write uh, articles about human rights. Almost 100 articles were created or enriched we held four online and offline editathons and uh, we were able to uh, evolve or, uh, or uh, we were supported by different 20 different Czech nonprofits uh, organizations who uh, take care of human rights and human rights topic in Czech Republic. If you are interested in this project, uh, you can find more on a recent DIFF article. So uh, don't be afraid to talk about the awesome things you do. It's just as important as talking about the things you're going to do, to talk about the things you have already done and went well. And uh, this is uh, something we do, we do a lot. I focus on a lot uh, to follow, do a follow up after every event. So this is a video from our uh, Human Rights Month on Wikipedia editathon. It has English subtitles and I'm going to play it for you. Právě probíhá editaton k měsíc lidských práv na Wikipedii. Měsíc lidských práv na Wikipedii probíhá poprvé, je součástí projektu Lidská práva na Wikipedii a snažili jsme se upozornit na to, že na Wikipedii existuje řada chybějících článků nebo neúplných článků o jednotlivých tématech lidských práv, ale také třeba o osobnostech, které se lidskoprávní problematice věnují anebo svým aktivismem se snaží měnit podmínky a porušování lidských práv na celém světě. 
píšu o preferovaných rodových zájmenech, které se zejména v angličtině používají k, k označování genderové příslušnosti a genderové identity dané osoby. Toto téma je důležité, protože si myslím, že bychom měli respektovat každého právo na identitu a integritu a to označování se těmi zájmeny k tomu patří. Já když brouzdám po internetu, tak chci nacházet věrohodné informace. A když jsme dostali nabídku stát si partnery z Wikimedii, tak mi to přišlo mě perfektní, protože to téma lidský práva je to téma, který my se v organizaci OPIM už dlouhodobě věnujeme. Kdo jiný by měl být teda tím nositelem těch informací, než ti, kterým těm tématům rozumí a věnují se jim? Dnes zakládám na České Wikipedii nové heslo a píši o Mahinur El Masri, což je egyptská právnička a lidskoprávní aktivistka, která sama často bez nároku na honorář a aktivně pomáhá nespravedlivě souzeným lidem v Egyptě. Tohle téma je pro mě důležité, protože pracuji v lidskoprávní sekci Člověka v tísni. To znamená, že ochrana lidských práv je dokonce i mojí živností, mojí náplní práce. A práce mě baví a je to i můj koníček. These videos are also a great way to thank your partners um, and uh, to reach out to potential partners. You know, next year we can just send someone this video and say, look uh, what it looked like last year. Do you want to take part this year? So that I think is uh, pretty useful. Promote your activities like their success depends on it because it does very deep yeah so we uh, reach out with um, press releases uh, almost every time we do a bigger project uh, it usually pays off because uh, we um, contact uh, relevant media for example when we did our human uh, rights month on wikipedia we uh, went uh, specifically for hate free culture and they were interested because it's a topic that they work on um, for they have been working on for years. So that's a little tip from me. Girls just want to have fun. And frankly, uh, everybody does uh, make marketing and PR fun. It's not uh, dead hard. And uh, one of the things uh, that we do uh, that are fun actually, or at least I believe so, is two minutes with a Wikipedian series, so where we did already two seasons. And uh, it's basically just talking to Wikipedians for two minutes and uh, presenting uh, the volunteering uh, people, the volunteers, the Wikipedians to the public, and maybe sharing the idea that uh, Wikipedia is created by volunteers which is something, unfortunately, a lot of Czechs still don't know. So this is one of the ways to support free knowledge from our part. And we were actually quite successful with this. Um, I did uh, analysis of uh, the second series recently, and I found out uh, that for very small budget, uh, only something like 40 euro on Facebook, we had uh, 20,000 views on Facebook and uh, more than 900 people clicked through to our donate page, which is not that bad. Only like two of them ended up donating, uh, donating but uh, I think it's um, a good result nevertheless. And uh, now I would like to, to, I would like to play one Excerpt Dobrý den, to you. jsem Anatol Svahilec a vy právě sledujete dvě minuty s Wikipedistou. Čas! Wikipedistický jméno? Tetečka Bednář, čítajte po polsku. Občanský věk? 19 let, 22 dní. Wikipedistický věk? 5 let a 140 dní. Domovský město? Hrdý občan Orlové, okres Karvina. Článek s nejdelším názvem? To vím naprosto přesně, prosím tě, to je kočar výskupa Julia Trojera z Trojerštajnu. 
Jaký funkce na Wikipedii zastáváš a co ty funkce znamenají? Já jsem na Wikipedii zprávce a já to používám hlavně, hlavně k řešení vandalismu. Co to je wikipedistický vandalismus? Tak to je záměrné chování k poškození Wikipedie. Kolik hodin týdně na Wikipedii zhruba strávíš? Um, tak to je mezi 0 a 168. <laughs> Co na to říká tvé okolí? Toleruje, leč nechápe. Počet nahraných fotek na uh, Wikimedia Commons? Myslím, že to jde k pěti tisícům. V každém případě asi tak ještě půlka toho čeká na svůj čas. Jaká je tvoje fotografická specializace? Já jsem vždycky strašně rád fotil lidí nebo třeba události, sporty pro Wiki. Teďka s covidem to šlo, to šlo dost dopříč, ale věřím, že, že se na to zase vrhnu. Na jakou fotku e, asi nikdy nezapomeneš? Já si myslím, že to bude fotka z letošního června. Budou to, bude to určitě nějaká fotka z Lužíc po moravském tornádu. Jaký stereotyp o Wikipedistech podle tebe není pravda? Že nejsme jenom banda anonymních nerdů. Jaký stereotyp o Wikipedistech je pravda? Jsou to alkoholici. Hostem dvou minut s Wikipedistou byl T. Bednář. Tadeáši, moc díky, že jsi na nás udělal čas. Taky díky, měj se. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm really proud of this project and I'm thankful to Clara, our ED, that uh, we're able to do this. And uh, I have to say one more thing about this. It was not expensive because the presenter is a keen Wikipedian. He is a my, he's my friend and he did it for free. And the cameraman is the friend of both of us and uh, he actually was very low cost. So it, it wasn't pricey at all. And uh, it's another thing that I want you to uh, want to encourage you to do, to reach out to the Wikipedia community, uh, because you can find very passionate people who will do things um, in the name of uh, free knowledge, basically. Yeah. So um, that was uh, all for me. Now I give the floor to Clara. Let's go to close this. So, uh, what does it change for uh, for me as an ED and uh, my team to have an in-house PR specialist? I hope you you could saw it for yourself. Uh, what I would uh, uh, how, how I would describe this uh outcome is that uh we have definitely concentrated concentrated work on both topics uh i mean public relations and fundraising our public presentation in numbers went up immediately we were able to unify it and strategic communication uh, externally and uh, coordinated uh, it internally and uh, of course this freeing uh, freeing up the capacity of other team members but of course you have to find the right person and persist even if everything looks at the beginning like <laughs> never ending space uh, like sahara for example so uh, good luck everyone Don't be afraid. Uh, I'm happy that we could share a few experiences with you. Uh, and we are always open and, uh, and uh, happy to share uh, more with you. Uh, feel free to reach us, uh, contact us uh, not only if you have questions, but uh, if you was interested in any of our activities and you want to cooperate or uh, connect our activities with with your uh, with activities of your affiliate or your user group uh, we will be more than happy and uh, uh, as well uh, what Natalia would like to start is the uh, fundraiser supported uh, group uh, for uh, for Europe so if you are interested in this uh, just Uh, write her an email. So thank you all for watching and 
Have a great day on the Canadian.